What's up and hello, my friends. I am Charlie Shrem, and you are listening and watching Untold Stories, where twice a week we get to dive deep together with some of crypto's most influential leaders to really find out how this movement came to be and, and where the hell are we going. We get to talk to some of the brightest crayons in the box, the sharpest tools in the shed, people who are one flower addition to a bouquet, extra lions in the pride, people who have that little bit of extra DNA that, that really will help push humanity forward. I'm, I'm trying to talk to those people every single day to make myself a little bit smarter, but make all of us a little bit smarter and give us the tools to have freedom and humanity and to grow together, but protect our own personal liberties. And in order for us to protect our own personal liberties, we have to make sure we are always creating the tools and the resources to do that where we don't need to rely on governments or, or corporations or, or anything. And you remove reliance and you remove the need to have trust. We all live in a much better world. I'm here today with someone who I hope can become a good friend of mine, Kevin Chu. Thank you. Kevin, thank you so much for coming on Untold Stories today. Oh, Charlie, thanks for having me. I'm really excited about today. In, in the video gaming world, you guys, pre-crypto, pre-everything, were the only industry that had to create a business out of socioeconomics in that you're not just focusing on de developing like platforms and, and software and graphics and all these things, but you also have to create a un you have to create these universes in where all these people are acting, interacting with each other, challenging their thoughts and doing all of these different things. And it's like such a perfect hand to hand in crypto. You started, you serve on the board of trustees at UC Berkeley and you were the co-founder of Kabam, which had partnerships with some uh, like Marvel and Star Wars and Fast and the Furious and Lord of the Rings. And you uh, were involved in that. Uh, eventually, I think the, the company sold and generated uh, over the course of its lifetime over like a billion dollars in value. And then you uh, you're involved in an in esports team, and esports is so cool. You founded Forte, which is a, a, another blockchain type project in the crypto space, and and now we're here to talk about Rally, which is a social token. And the reason I gave that whole intro to everyone and and talking to you now is because, do you feel that what you're doing now, with developing a a, a social token, and I want you to explain what that is, do you think that it's a culmination? of your life's work and everything you've done up until now, everything you've learned is so you can do this the right way. Absolutely. That is a hundred percent. I, I, Charlie, I've never had anybody frame it like that before. That is, as you were saying it, that is the, that is the track that goes on in my head, that this is the culmination of everything I've ever worked on. And, and I couldn't be more, more passionate about kind of what I think, the crypto industry is headed and the type of uh, kind of new talent and new ideas coming into it, um, you know, from, from all over the world. And, but I think that, you know, my background has given me a very unique perspective on, on crypto and, um, and rally, I think it's a culmination of everything I've worked on for the last 20 years. Tell me about it. Tell me like, tell me a story of when you were, working on something else, but you found out about crypto or you found out about Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever it was. Even some people yeah. tell me that they found out about crypto from Ripple or even Dash or whatever like that. Tell me like when you were working on something else and you heard about this and you said, wow, like I want to do that. I know exactly the exact time, which is uh, there was a, a I was in, I was early in the days of building on the Facebook platform. So this is 2006, 2007. Most people don't know, aren't familiar with the Facebook platform because it was it was a relatively short lived um, experiment. But they had when Facebook was just a website, they allowed you to build a, um, an application right into the the website experience and tap into a pretty powerful like APIs. Zynga, right? Wasn't didn't Zynga right. do that, a lot of that? That's how okay. Zynga started. That's okay. right. That's how Zynga started. That's how Kabam started. So we were building games, awesome. you know, inside of that. There was a single person. He had fled uh, Iran um, and in persecution, a PhD, one of the most brilliant guys I know. He ended up creating an application that was called Send Hearts. 
on Facebook, you literally send a really visual graphic of yeah. a heart and you had to pay, you know, you could send a, a plain heart for free, a bunch of plain hearts for free, but you could pay, you know, a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars to send a really beautiful visual heart, kind of early NFTs in some ways. Um, and this guy had like, like, here's just a single person building this thing. And he grew it into millions and millions of users uh, a day and, and millions and millions of dollars of revenue. And the guy is just like, and I would always chat with him because he was one of the smartest guys I knew. Uh, and, uh, um, and so he had worked on that project, sold it, made a bunch of money. It was just kind of kicking around doing uh, a bunch of stuff. And then probably in 2014, 2015, um, I was, uh, <laughs> I was uh, at a hookah lounge with them. And he was telling me he was doing this thing with Counter Strike, which is a game that's been around forever. But Counter Strike skins specifically, and you could trade the. One of the problems with trading Counter Strike skins is the, um, you know, a bunch of stuff. But it was hard to get fiat payments um, Hmm. to work in the secondary markets where people were trading these these skins. And so he was telling me how he was using, you know, he was using Bitcoin. To uh, to create a settlement layer for uh, Counter Strike skins, and I was like, "Whoa, that is crazy!" I don't know what what is Bitcoin. What do you mean? There's this like other thing you can use. Um, and so he was telling me about it, and of course, I I, I pulled out my phone, and I went to start checking it out, and I went home, and I I was like, "I got to trade one of these things. I got to figure this thing out." And so that was my first exposure to Bitcoin was because of this other thing in the gaming industry where people were trading. Yeah, digital assets for for Bitcoin. Bitcoin, I was just going to write something down that you gave me an idea, but essentially Bitcoin, what he was saying was that Bitcoin to him was trustless finality. The ability to have like a end-to-end settlement layer to be able to trade video game skins like counter I used to love, I played Counter-Strike Source like crazy. I was yeah. a big CS guy. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that such an interesting thing? And did anything come of that? Uh, yeah, so I mean, he he's gone off to build a very uh, he built a very successful uh, business doing that, and then in 2016, I had you know he was starting to tell me about Ethereum and how he thought Ethereum was doing something interesting. He was still trying to figure it out, um, and so I got I, I started to to check out the Ethereum white paper and um, and, and think a little bit about that, but I couldn't figure it out. I was like, I mm. like. I still couldn't quite wrap my head around Bitcoin. And so Ethereum was like another thing that I was like, I, I don't, I don't get this shit. And I was still, at the time I was still running Kabam. And so I uh, had a, had my hands full with a bunch of other stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, it's so like kind of, kind of put it in a drawer for a little bit. And then when I sold Kabam uh, and, and exited that after 11 years, I was like, oh man, what am I going to do now? Did you start working so when you were like 10 years old? I started to go back to Ethereum. I was like, oh, let me, let me understand what this Ethereum thing is. And then it was right at that time where CryptoKitties was just starting to take off and, and the Dapper Lab folks had, had done an amazing job with that. And that was like the light bulb moment for me was when I first, when I was reading the Ethereum white paper and I was like thinking about CryptoKitties and I was like, oh my gosh. This is this this is taking all of the things that I would make and put onto a, a traditional game server, and now I could take it off that server and put it into you know put it onto uh, a public you know layer one, and uh, and everyone doesn't have to trust that my server can be the arbiter of value, but that there is uh, arbiter a of value. I like that. way to do that. Yeah. And take the game out of the game, put take the economics out of a game and put it onto a blockchain. And that's uh, that was kind of the light bulb moment for me. Do you think and, we are still what in the intersection of video gaming and crypto? Are we still in that first level where we're looking at it as like value add? So it's like skins and gaming and kind of NFTs and what's that next level? Is it? virtual worlds powered with a crypto ecosystem where you can actually like you know like i can i you know like i'd love to see a game or like a world where i can be you know like a prince and have a house and then i can hire you know hire staff to actually work like in the house (laughs) 
or like a chef in the game, but that's a real world person who's now having to come to the computer and do, you know what I mean? Like, is that the next, and then doing it in a virtual reality headsets? I mean, is that the next step or the next evolution of this intersection? I think there's, that's probably like step five. Oh, okay. I think. Because I really want to do that. Sort of, yeah. Yeah. I think we're on step two for now. I think, I think, you know, for, for me, I think there's um, a lot of work still to get to, uh, a video game and, and experiences where crypto can truly be like the water that surrounds us as, as the fish in it. And we don't have to pay attention to it. It's just like there. Um, and so I, right now we're in a world where we have to really pay attention and, and figure out how to use these digital assets. And it's not easy for the average person, even for a gamer. And we work with a lot of, you know, gamers, um, at this point still, obviously with, with, uh, with Rally and uh, with Genji and so forth. And so we're, we're still at a point where we're, we're kind of on step one, where there's digital currencies that you can now create and use in the game uh, or a gamer can use. And then there's, there's digital assets or items that um, you can get uh, also on the blockchain that uh, you, can, you can use. But those things don't work really well together yet. There's no, I, I think the next step is for those things to work really well together and for there to be a true economy that emerges. And, and by economy, I, it, it's kind of exactly what you're starting to talk about, Charlie, which is, you know, how does, um, a, whether it's a game developer and the, the players, how do they participate in an economy where yes, exactly. uh, they're creating new things together and they're sharing in that value? And then there's trading, whether it's time for, for value, like you're talking about with you know, hiring the chef, or it's value for value like i'm going to be able to trade you my sword for your shirt uh in this game but it's not just and that it's hard to interrupt you but it's like it's like you look at a medieval game right imagine if like a king can raise an army and then pay <laughs> all of his you know to conquer another virtual world can can do a harry imagine if there was yeah. vikings and you yeah. can you can raid towns and pillage yeah. and stuff like that all with this imagine wait next level Imagine if I wanted to build a castle and another king was willing to lend me money to build my virtual castle. You can have mortgages in video games. And oh, crypto yeah. is the arbiter of value. I didn't say it. You said it. It creates that <laughs> finality. It's the arbiter of value. That's where yeah. this is all going, I think. So, and then the, the people will have easy ways to, to get into crypto, out of crypto, et cetera. And I think once you have like that base infrastructure in place, then what you're talking about is, okay, then somebody's going to build, you know, the, the sheen on that, the, the front end to that, right? Whether that's literally sitting in a, you know, it, it, with our, we're sitting in a VR world with our headsets on and we could see all this virtual assets and so forth in a, in a visual way that surrounds us. Like, it, yeah, abs that is absolutely going to happen. But I think we, we, we build it up from the ground up first, like focusing on getting the value right getting the economics right, and then getting it to a point where, uh, you know, people can can get into crypto in a way that I think uh, isn't as scary as it is today, uh, and then understand how to interact with it, how to pull that crypto asset, you know, that that's sitting on, on you know, in the ether, uh, you know, into an experience like their VR headset or their game or whatever they're, they're trying to get into. That, that process, um, I think is uh, is one that still needs to be worked on. I love the security model. Like the security model of of Web three is fantastic. That is absolutely where we're all going to end up in. But we're sort of in this world now where uh, you know, continue on the gaming, you know, analog. We're kind of in this world of EverQuest. EverQuest was one of the first MMO, you know, RPGs, and it was just a freaking hard game to get into, and and it was a hardcore game through through and through. So I kill you in the game. I take all your, your, yeah, your shit. Yeah, and you have to yeah, respond it was like, with nothing. Yeah, yeah, and then you had to respond with nothing, right? But it was like even getting into the game was really hard. And then what happened, you know, there's a few other, and it was a huge hit, obviously. And it was like a super passionate crowd that loved EverQuest. But a lot of people, including myself, would look at EverQuest and I'd be like, I, I don't know. I, this is a lot of work to get. It, it's, it's a lot to get into that but game. That was too difficult. Well, it was very, very difficult to get into you it. You don't want to make something too easy either. There's like a perfect balance, right? Well, in gaming, what 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 happens is that 
we, we think about how do we create the right on-ramp into that experience. And so you, you start taking games like World of Warcraft, which is probably credited with the first time that a, you know, a game really, you know, Blizzard has historically been known to do this really well, which is take something super difficult as kind of the end game format uh, and then make it way easier and way more fun to, to sort of do it one step at a time and get into it. And then the end game of World of Warcraft is just as hardcore, maybe not as hardcore as EverQuest, but they have PvP, ser- like you can choose to go to a PvP server, you can choose to go into all these like crazy... They had multiple worlds and that had different rules and things like that. That's right, that's right. Some worlds and you couldn't so, die, some worlds you couldn't... You can choose to build. go into those things, yeah. right? But the on-ramp is much easier. The on-ramp is what brought the next 10 million people into, oh. into MMOs, but EverQuest was like the super hardcore thing that literally you know, a few hundred thousand people at first, you know, really kind of, you know, did. And so I think that the crypto world, um, like I'm really passionate about, about figuring that out for crypto world, which is, which is kind of where rally comes in, which is how do we, how do we bring the next hundred million people into crypto? And like, what is it that brings them in? Well, I, you know, we've, I've always thought that people care about other people. And so how do we tokenize people and create, an opportunity for any individual in the world without depending on a bank or a, a company, a financial institution to create their own crypto assets and then use that and imbue those crypto assets with value, right? And, and, and of course, if we start with people who are already have, you know, 10 million followers on, on our Instagram or Twitter, now there's a reason that, you know, you as a new kind of a newbie into crypto and you've maybe heard of, you know, mm-hmm. Bitcoin or, or whatever and Dogecoin and, you're like now, what, what's next? Oh, and this this person that I care about is is creating their own, you know, digital autographs and digital currencies and digital jerseys and and digital album covers. I think that's kind of the world that we're moving into in 2021, where um, uh, all sorts of people are coming into crypto and trying to figure out how to use this in a way that's. Uh, I think we're going to bring in the next hundred million people into the world. Well, they're going to use it in a way that they know in the same way you are doing something crypto related with what you know. That's, that's kind of like the goal. We want to bring people in who are, I mean, we wanted to, we brought Elon Musk in. I mean, you want to bring in people that the, the most brilliant people, the ones who are, you know, 13 eggs in a dozen or whatever, Baker's dozen, you know, the extra, <laughs> a little bit of the extra. All right, guys, so with a pretty crazy chaotic year behind us, we've got 200 reasons to put your Bitcoin to the test, courtesy of my friends at BitCasino, and I've gotten you an amazing, amazing offer. You have to go to bitcasino.io forward slash shrimp to get it, but all you have to do is wager 5 MBTC, small amount, wager 5 MBTC or more on BitCasino on any slot, and you get 200 free spins to their legacy of dead game. You get 200 free spins, 200 spins to win more money for free. And all you have to do is do one slot bet. I love these guys. BitCasino was ahead of the crypto game before that game even got going. The original Bitcoin led online gaming destination. They really, really, really pushed and to continue to set the standard for fun, fast and fair gameplay because you have the blockchain. You might as well be fair and transparent while you're at it. Deposit, wager, and withdraw in Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tron, Litecoin, so many cryptos, all in real time, all the time with BitCasino. Moving right along. Hey guys, it's Charlie. And remember that time we interviewed Anthony Trenchev from Nexo Finance? Well, they are on a roll right now offering 5.9% APR on your crypto credit. You'll be able to borrow at less than 6% on some of your crypto. They got a savings account that's offering 12% interest a year. And now they have an integrated exchange so you can trade between all your cryptos without ever leaving their integrated wallet. It's so amazing. Make sure you check it out at nexo.io and start earning interest, start managing your assets because crypto banking just got real with Nexo. I love that. That's awesome. (laughs) I love Nexo. It's such a great company. I have a stupid question for you, and this this is not part of my research. I just want to know you. Uh, you mentioned Gen Gen G before, and, I, and and you're the parent. It's the parent company. You have uh, two two esports teams, uh, Soul Dynasty, and Samsung Galaxy. One is in the Overwatch League, and one is the League League of Legends. I'm very bad at League of Legends. I've tried to play a million times. <laughs> the question I have for you is: What are the economics of these esports teams? How do they make money? How do the how do you recruit players? Like 
it's such an unknown. Tell like give us the <laughs> nutshell of esports in two minutes or five minutes or ten, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. The the money in esports uh, as a business owner uh, generally comes in in sort of three flavors today. I should, I should say today. Not, this is more like a, a three years ago. Um, so the first is sponsorships. So it's just like any other thing that we have millions of view, viewers watching something. There's there's always an opportunity to sell sponsors, and those those deals range. For a top tier team, those deals are generally sort of mid to high six figures, if not seven figures a year. And that's because for the very, very top teams. That's because of the TV and the exposure that the players and the teams are getting on social media and TV and stuff like that. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. And and these are generally so the the most watched, you know, matches of the year. So it's like worlds for League of Legends. You get 20 million people watching any one of the games and then at the very finals it's a hundred million people uh so it, these are very very large numbers and uh and generally they're broadcast while sometimes there are tv deals on espn and a few other things uh you know largely it's on twitch it's on huya uh do you those two have now merged in china uh, so it's on the online streaming platforms it's on YouTube. only fans right or no that's something else no, it's, yeah, this is primarily just video platforms. Okay. And so you have like tens of millions of people watching some of these games. And so sponsorships is kind of one way. Uh, the second kind of pool of money is from uh, the league deals. Them. And so as a team owner, you get, um, oh, you're there's an actual the league. Like, oh, mm-hmm. I didn't realize that the, it's yeah. so kind of organized. Yeah, so well, that's one of the things that's relatively new. So I, I, I that's kind of uh, started about three years ago when League of Legends and Overwatch created these new leagues, and and you, you bought into the leagues, uh, you get a revenue share from the leagues. Um, so that's kind of the second way. And the third way is the prize money. Mm. So yeah, the the prize money for some of these games like uh, Dota, um, you know, they're twenty plus million dollar purchase now what? so if you wait if you're first place you know it's a 10 million dollar purse wow. uh, yeah so in in you know PUBG, you know historically has been five six million dollars etc so these purses can be really big uh but it's very volatile Is so there a grand theft auto it's league? great if you win it's not so great if you Absolutely. you know you're out of the you know out of the purse money is there a grand theft auto league there needs to be one. i could be uh, on that team I don't know. Grand Theft Auto is not, a, you know, historically, it's not, yeah, it's not been a competitive game like that. No, it's not. It's not. Um, are they teaching? Because I, uh, you and I are probably in the same age in our 30s and everything. But um, back when I was in university, they didn't, there was no classes on like the economics of video gaming and things like that. Do they teach those things now? Like what type of courses can you take in schools about this? <laughs> the economic uh, video game like animation and, and coding video i'm talking about the economics of the, economic, like the video the business game industry. side of things yeah it's so intriguing uh, because it was an industry before crypto that had to deal with the social you know the, so, the social part of it as well yeah yeah you know uh a lot of uh you know video game companies hire economists on staff because we really yeah. oh yeah yeah like oh, second okay. life um famously was it didn't I tried buying second first life one, but they, they 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 first came out and said we're putting economists on staff, like not just everyday economists, but like really good ones. Um, Philip Rosedale it was is a brilliant uh, yeah, mathematician brilliant. and economist himself. He's brilliant himself, absolutely. Yeah, yeah he, he's just been so um, far out on on thinking ahead of kind of what the metaverse uh, will will eventually be. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I don't think there's any. I'm sure there's universities that teach it. I'm just, I, I haven't um, yeah. researched it. So why, why a social token? And what does that even mean? <laughs> right, so social token. So I, I just believe in this world where, you know, we start with this idea of there's a, you know, Bitcoin is self-sovereign. It's, I can, I can, I can uh, use a non-custodial wallet. I can hold it. I don't need a bank. I don't need a country. I don't need, like, and, and that's amazing, right? Bitcoin is, will always be the most interesting, you know, token because of that, it's, you know, it's founding, it's Genesis, it's, you know, the, the mystery behind Satoshi. Uh, it's a religion. Bitcoin is a religion. Now. It's a religion. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, 
and that's what makes it so interesting. Like everything about it is awesome. But it's we're now at a point where if you're thinking today, if you're you're sitting here, especially in February 2021, and you're saying, gosh, you know, I just discovered, you know, my friends are telling me about this Bitcoin thing. I've now finally like got around to understand what the heck Bitcoin is. Now it's at 40, whatever thousand. And should I buy it? Should I not buy it? Well, you know what? The market cap of Bitcoin is is, is what it is. Hmm. Uh, and, and if you're doing well enough, yeah, you know, hopefully you should start rotating some percentage of your portfolio into it. But this opportunity that I get to make my own coin, and you'd say, okay, why, why would you do that? Well, it's the same question that people ask to, you know, like the same, same question I asked my friend in 2014, you know, why the heck would I use a Bitcoin to settle like a Counter-Strike um, skin trade? And, uh, you know, the reality is these days we're just, li- we're living our lives on the internet. And I think that's becoming more and more obvious. And the opportunity for me to create my own very, my very own token uh, and use it with my fans, use it with my business partners, use it with my uh, oh, this is know, awesome! I need to customers and partners in, in other parts of the world to transact. Because if I'm a Twitch streamer, for example, I've probably got f- people sitting in, and I'm not even like the ninjas or, or the biggest, but I'm you know kind of a mid size, like a really good size streamer with a thousand or two thousand people watching me every night, kind of kind of streamer. Um, I probably have people from fifty different countries in my stream. So you and, have creators creating these these coins, and I'm on yeah. it now. Mm-hmm. Why are you, why are you, what's, so explain, so you have the coin, the creator, the supporters, what is all that? What is, this is very intriguing. I've, I wanted to do like a, a socioeconomic experiment based on macro coin mm-hmm. economics that I experienced in prison. Yeah. And maybe this could be the way <laughs> I do that. No, there's a whole, you'd laugh, but Charlie I wrote a whole book, like the macro economic school of thought. So explain to me how this yeah, all works I, here. Right, so we use a we use a primitive called token bonding curves, and so what this what this does is it, it does a few things. One is that you don't need to go find an exchange to to have your Charlie token, you know, um, you know, on it. You don't need to get your your, your token onto a Coinbase or or uh, any other centralized exchange. You don't even need to get it onto a Dex. Um, you what you, what happens is there's automatic liquidity. By using rally token mm. to basically your, your Charlie coin, for example, would be bonded to a rally you know token, and then p- anybody coming in and out of your token would go through the bonding curve instead of a, uh, a you know it, it's a form of an AMM uh, sure. in the space. So you get automated, automated liquidity, you get automated price discovery, and so what happens is that the amount of supply and demand will balance in the marketplace on that token bonding curve such that there'll be a true market-based price for your token. Oh, this is so and, cool. And the third thing is that we, we then, of course, vertically integrate it such that uh, there's an easy way for fiat rails. You can take Bitcoin, you can take Ethereum, you can take a bunch of, you know, I think there's 80 different assets that you can trade uh, that we support like an, like an exchange for. So your Charlie token, could, somebody can buy it with Bitcoin and Ether and, they could swipe a credit card. They could do, you know, a debit card transaction to buy into, you know, your coin. We just make it super easy for anybody to start buying Charlie coins um, and, uh, and and do that. But because we we aim to work with some of the biggest names in, you know, entertainment and sports and, and music, etc. And these people, are, you know, the regulations aren't aren't sitting still. And so what we've you know done is we've gone state by state and gotten money transmission licenses. And we we don't do that at Rally. We actually set up another company, oh wow, a centralized company that would do compliance, such that if you want to use fiat on ramps, you know your your you know, your your users are basically subject to yeah, compliance. Yeah. And but this is if all you're under just like same... you want to just be a maxi and you want to like you know go to you know, take everything onto. Um, you know, onto mainnet, you can do that too, but you have to pay all the gas fees and you have to deal with everything yourself. So we, we just make it a really easy on-ramp. It's, it's going back to our EverQuest versus yeah. World of Warcraft, you know, analog. We try to create the World of Warcraft on-ramp experience for you and your fans. I mean, you guys probably don't need it, but for, yeah. for you know, you can imagine a musician or something like that, like Portugal the Man, we just recently onboarded kind of his Grammy award-winning um, uh, artist. If they don't, you know, they're always been... Crypto interested, but ninety nine percent of their fans don't know anything about crypto. 
and they now have you know hundreds and hundreds of people using their crypto um, in their you know in in their community, and so it's just an easy way to on ramp people into crypto and then graduate them eventually into a self software non custodial solution kind of over time. What blockchain does Rally sit on? Ethereum. Okay, and so when when someone creates a token and all the mechanisms within the token are all are all smart contracts created, and so like all the features of a coin are maintained and done on within like a rally, uh, like, like server or cloud computing, or is it like actually every coin is its own standalone coin on top of Ethereum? Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. So there's a hybrid, uh, infrastructure. So we, we have a side chain that is a rally maintained, uh, sort of Ethereum based. What? What's um, a side? What is that? Solution. <laughs> Essentially, just means that it's uh, we we run a node uh, that's not hooked up to the rest of Ethereum, and our goal is, of course, eventually to hook it up to Ethereum, um, but it allows us to do a, a bunch of computational things that don't require any gas and and, mm. and so forth. And so, um, we're we're of course looking at what's happening with you know Ethereum two, you know, two mm. but more importantly, what's happening with Layer twos uh, right now in Ethereum. So. We, we basically just do all this stuff on the side that requires a bunch of computation and, and what would normally cost a ton of gas to, to do. Um, but we host it. So it is, you know, it is a... It's a hybrid model right now, yeah. Yeah, it's a trusted solution, but there's no, there's no cost, you know, to, to running it. Um, so that's kind of the kiddie pool where you start. And of course, a lot of people, even, you know, crypto experienced, you know, people just stay there because of the, you know, with, with gas, you know, being... 200 to 300 guay, you know, plus 1700, you know, dollar Ethereum. It's just, you know, doing a transaction is expensive. And so having a sidechain solution actually um, uh, is, is, is great as we all, yeah. And this was even before we got to like the current state, you know, even back in the, the crypto kitties days, it was clear that, you know, besides the scaling part of Ethereum, which is an issue, it's really the, the cost issue because you can't do a five dollar transaction when the transaction costs are, you know, fifteen dollars, uh, or today it's really actually even higher. So you know, it's a uh, we we one of the great, greatest things that we see is we see a lot of five dollar transactions. We get two dollar transactions. Yeah, well, super micro ones too. But you've you've user experienced the whole blockchain here, and I'm like on your website and playing around with it. You've yeah. user experienced everything. From getting into it to, to using it to the wallet to the to the trading to the to the eventually you know the social gaming whatever it is it's all in one ecosystem. But while every other project and company had to either create their own blockchain to do it, you've created this hybrid model that allows for someone to like eventually. I like this is very interesting and very novel, very cool. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the listeners are going to be very intrigued with this and try to understand a little if, bit if you more look around there's uh i forget the the menu that it's under at this point but there'll be a section called mainnet and that's where you can like you can you know you can see all the all the things that are happening on that you can do on mainnet and so you can you can uh use something that we call a bridge in and bridge out these are smart contracts that that live on ethereum itself to move between the side chain and ethereum mainnet i think i'm going to launch a token on this for fun because i have an idea you totally you should absolutely do it i will this has been amazing kevin thank you so much for taking the time and and teaching everyone about uh about esports about video games about social tokens about kind of like the culmination bringing it all together i think like if i can let the listener walk away with like a different perspective of understanding what this all is from every episode then we've succeeded so you've definitely given me that today thank you appreciate it thanks for having me